today what we're gonna do is taste two different beans from the same farm and we're going to roast them with um, different time and temperature because of it. We're going for two different roast profiles. These beans were fermented three weeks apart and they're very different because of whatever might have been going on in the environment. Wild yeast and bacteria are probably the main contributor to this because the genetics are pretty much the same. So we've got these ones. They've got um, a really nice look to them. They happen to be more bland. I'm not really sure why. They've got a little bit of fruit notes. There's just not a lot of uh, depth of chocolate either. So what we're gonna do with these is we're gonna roast them darker and longer. And this will develop more chocolatey flavors. And so what's probably gonna happen is closer to a 30 minute roast, and we're gonna roast to about 250 degrees. These ones here are extremely fruity. They've got bright, um, like punchy characteristics. They're juicy. They're like dried fruits. I, use, I taste kind of dried apricots in this. And so we're gonna try and maintain as much of that as possible. And if anything, err on the side of being an under roasted cacao, just because right now I'm eating them and I don't wanna stop because I think they're so tasty. And that's really rare for raw beans. So here we go, let's roast. Okay, now what we have here are the two roasts. We have roasted the fruity ones for about 18 or 19 minutes, and we went up to about 233 degrees Fahrenheit. We kept everything. This is a much shorter roast than we would normally do, but I wanted to maintain that fruit. This one, we got more chocolate out of. There wasn't as much fruit in it to begin with, and so I wanted more chocolate out of this, which is why we went up to 250 degrees and roasted for about 26, 27 minutes. And perfect, we're gonna blend them together. You see this happening in wine all the time where you want, say, um, in Bordeaux, they mix up to five different grapes. In Rhone, they mix three grapes very often. You'll see a Grenache Sera Movedre blend all the time. The reason is because you can get fruity characteristics from this and earthy characteristics from that. You can get the very best of what you want and blend them together in the ratios that you think is best. We're going to do the same thing with this in chocolate. So we're going to get more chocolatey nutty flavors from the darker longer roast. We're going to get more fruity flavors from the lighter more fruitier cacao. And this was on purpose. It's also what we have to work with. This is both the same farm and the ferments were done, I wanna say three weeks apart, which is not much, but wildly different flavors. And so this is the exciting part of what we do. We're making really interesting chocolate. Now, if I had enough of just these beans, I wouldn't be blending them because I, I really want a dominant, punchy, fruity characteristic coming out of this one someday soon because all the farms here are, that we're working with are planting more. This is one of the best ones. We're gonna do the same thing with our farm that we're planting on the North Shore. We've got 55 acres we leased, and we just got the first um, 50 trees in. We're gonna probably go up to about 8,000 trees. And we're gonna plant in blocks. We're gonna try and get these fruity notes, and then we'll have some that have really strong characteristics like that, and others that we're gonna blend and try and just make the very best chocolate in the world we can. That happens on growing. Thanks for watching. Happy chocolate making. See you next time.